Decades ago, people had to get out of the car when arriving home in order to open the garage door. Today, it's routine to open and close your garage door at the push of a button, either on a wall-mounted pad or on a remote control. A garage door opener's motor drives either a belt, a chain, or a screw rod like these models. In turn, they move a carriage connected to the garage door. At this factory, the production line starts and ends at the same place. They take one completed garage door opener off the line, then start a new one by attaching a power cord to the unit steel chassis. Then they place the chassis onto a traveling assembly fixture and plug in the power cord to prep the unit for testing later. They place the unit's plastic housing next to the chassis then snap in the plastic safety cover. This goes over the direct current motor, the equivalent of one and a quarter horsepower. They attach an optical encoder to the motor. The encoder is a sensor which reads the door's position so that the motor knows when to stop moving the carriage. They place the motor against the safety cover, then screw it in place. In the housing, they install the motion sensor. It turns on the opener's light as soon as you walk into the garage or when the garage door opens. Next are the switches for programming the remote control and for setting the travel limits. These are the points to which the opener must move the door to fully open and close it. They then install the circuit board, routing the antenna for the remote control receiver to the outside. They plug in the motion sensor cable, then wire and plug in the connector for the light bulbs, and fasten the board in place with screws. They attach the electrical ground wire to the chassis, connect the power cable, and then the optical encoder to the circuit board. With all the internal components installed now, they affix the housing to the chassis. This completes the brain of the garage door opener called the operator unit. An automated testing machine now checks all the functions, simulating the load of the garage door. It also checks the light bulb sockets and the connection ports on the circuit board for the safety beams. The beams stop and reverse the closing door if they detect any object in its path. Once the operator unit passes inspection, it comes full circle to the end, which is also the start of the production line. A plastic lens to enclose the light bulbs and the unit comes off the line. The carriage rail is milled from galvanized steel. It has slots for locking in plastic liners, which hold the screw rod. To produce the screw rod, the factory machines a solid bar of steel to the required dimensions and profile. Then with high pressure rollers, it forms threads in it. Workers insert the screw rod into the liners in the rail. For the retail market, rather than produce one long rail and screw rod, the factory makes three shorter connecting sections that fit into a smaller package. This machine lubricates the screw rod with grease. It helps it rotate smoothly in the rail liner when the opener's motor is running. When the screw rod turns, teeth on the base of the carriage interlock with the threads, moving the carriage along the rail. Workers first install the carriage base at the factory. Then they pack all the garage door opener components for shipping, starting with the rail sections and the operator unit. Last to go in are the wall-mounted control pad, the remote controls, and the safety beams, which you install on each side of the garage door opening. When you install the garage door opener, you insert the screw rod into the motor's drive shaft. Then you assemble the rest of the carriage, connecting it to an arm which attaches to the garage door. Motor runs, screw rod turns, carriage moves. 
and your garage door opens or closes.